This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the amazing Stephen Jarvis and Friends podcast, part of the Deluxe Edition Network, where if you go to the deluxeeditionnetwork.com, you will find the May podcast of the month, which are the real drunks and horsing around. Also, if you stay on the deluxeeditionnetwork.com, you'll find many other genres and podcasters on there. They're all great. Check them out. You will not be disappointed. Even though I've recorded this on Thursday, it will be released on Saturday, this Saturday, as I will be taking a little hiatus for the weekend, um, helping my wife pack up some stuff so that we can move for the 21st, I do believe, of this month. Thank you so very much for showing the amazing love and support. And today I'm talking about the life and times of Herb Brooks. Herbert Paul Brooks Jr. was an American ice hockey coach and player. His most notable achievement came in 1980 as head coach of the gold medal winning U.S. hockey team, Olympic hockey team at Lake Placid. At the games, Brooks' American team upset the heavy favored Soviet team in a match that came to be known as the Miracle on Ice. Brooks also coached multiple NHL or National Hockey League teams as well as a French team at the 1998 Winter Olympics. He ultimately returned to coach the U.S. men's team to a silver medal at the 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City. Brooks died in a car accident in 2003. At the age of, at the time of his death, he was the director of player personnel for the NHL's Pittsburgh Penguins. He was pro, he was inducted after his death in the Hockey Hall of Fame as a builder in twenty in 2006. Sorry about that. Early years. Brooks was born in St. Paul, Minnesota to Pauline and Herbert Brooks Sr. He attended Johnson High School where his team won the 1955 State Ice Hockey Championship. Brooks continued his ice hockey career with the University of Minnesota Gophers. From 1955 to 1959, he was a member of the 1960 Olympic team, only to become the last cut the week before the game started. Three weeks later, Brooks sat at home with his father and watched the team he almost made win gold in Squaw Valley. Afterwards, Brooks went up to the coach, Jack Riley, and said, well, you must have made the right decision. You won. This humbling moment served as further motivation for Brooks, an already self-driven person. From 1960 to 1970, Brooks set a record by playing for the U.S. national team eight times, including the 64 and 68 Olympic teams. While playing for the Rochester Mustangs in the United States Hockey League in the 61-62 season, he formed part of the highest scoring forward line in USHL hockey history at the time, along with Bill Reichart and Ken Johansson. Careers coaching career. After retiring as a player, Brooks first tried his hand at selling insurance. Lou Nanny, who played with Brooks on the 68 team for the United States, helped recruit Brooks to become a coach. He was brought on to coach the freshman at his alma mater, the University of Minnesota, Minnesota Golden Gophers, in 1970. He coached the Minnesota Junior Stars from 71 to 72. Brooks was hired as head coach of Minnesota in 72. He would lead them to three national championship titles in 74, 76, and 79. Brooks finished his collegiate coaching career with a record of 175 wins, 101 losses, and 20 ties. Soon after Minnesota won its third college championship, he was hired to coach the 1980 Olympic team due to lobbying from Nanny and U.S. hockey executive Walter Bush after Jack Parker declined the position. 
Handpicking his team, he named several of his Minnesota players to the team, as well as several from their rivals, Boston University and the University of Matt, Wisconsin at Madison. To complete with the Soviet Union team specifically, Brooks developed a hybrid of the rugged physical North American style and the faster European style, which emphasized creativity and teamwork. He also stressed peak conditioning, believing that one of the reasons the Soviet team had dominated international competition was that many of their opponents were exhausted by the third period. After his team's Olympic gold medal win, Brooks moved to Switzerland to coach H.C. Davos in the National League A. However, he resigned from this position in January 1981, only six months after being hired with the team having a poor record and Brooks facing criticism for what was described as rough practices from 1981 to 1985 he coached in the national hockey league for the new york rangers where he became the first american born coach in rangers team history to win 100 games after a brief stop at then ncaa division three st cloud state university he returned to the nhl to coach the minnesota north stars from 87 to 88 New Jersey Devils 92-93 and Pittsburgh Penguins 99-2000. He was a longtime scout for the Penguins from the mid-90s and held the role of director of player personnel from, 20, from 2002 to the day of his death. His hiring by the North Stars in 1987 was the last time a college coach was selected to coach an NHL team until North Dakota coach Dave Haxtell was tapped to coached the Philadelphia Flyers in May 2015. Coach also coached, Brooks also coached two more Olympic hockey teams, Team France at the 98 Winter Olympics in Nag Nago and the U.S. hockey team again at the 20, 2002 Winter Olympics in Salt Lake City. The 2002 team defeated the Russians in the semifinals en route to a silver, losing in the gold medal game to Canada. The U.S. win over Russia came exactly two, 22 years to the day after the famous Miracle on Ice game. Brooks was inducted into the United States Hockey Hall of Fame in 1990 and the International Hockey Hall of Fame in 1999. He was honored after his death with the Wayne Gretzky International Award in 2004 and inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. On January 13, 2000, Brooks confronted Cal Colorado Avalanche announcer John Kelly for suggesting that Matthew Barnaby faked an injury after being hit by Alexei Gustavro with 20 seconds left. He was suspended two games for that confrontation on January 18th, having been suspended indefinitely since January 15th. The night before Brooks got suspended, Gus Gustavro was suspended two games for the hit. Broadcasting career. After he was fired by the Minnesota North Stars, Brooks then spent two years doing TV color commentary for Sports Channel America along with play-by-play -play announcer Jiggs McDonald. Brooks married Patricia Lane, known as Patty, in 1965. They had two children, Dan and Kelly. Death and Legacy. On the afternoon of August 11, 2003, six days after his 66th birthday, Brooks died in a single car accident on Interstate 35 near Forest Lake, Minnesota. It is believed that he fell asleep behind the wheel before the accident, and neither drugs nor alcohol were responsible. Brooks was not wearing his seatbelt at the time of the crash, and according to the Minnesota State Patrol, it is likely he would have survived the crash if he had been wearing a seatbelt. George Nagabads was the team physician when Brooks coached the U.S. men's national team and Minnesota Golden Gophers men's ice hockey and described books by saying, I really appreciate the way Herbie always treated the players. And for me, he was just like my son. In 2004, Disney released a film about the 1980 Olympic team called Miracle featuring Kurt Russell playing the part of Brooks. Carl Malden had previously played Brooks in a 1981 television film called Miracle on Ice. Brooks served as a consultant for the Disney film during principal photography which was completed shortly before his death at the end of the movie there's a dedication to brooks it states he never saw it he lived it on the 25th anniversary of the miracle on ice the ice hawk the olympic ice arena in lake placid new york where the united states won the gold medal was renamed herb brooks arena 
A statue of Brooks depicting his reaction to the victory in the Miracle Game was erected at the entrance to the River Center in St. Paul, Minnesota in 20, 2003. The Herb Brooks Award is awarded at the conclusion of the Minnesota State High School League State Hockey Champion Tournament to the most qualified hockey player in the state tournament who strongly, strongly represents the values, characteristics, and traits that defined Herb Brooks. The Herb Brooks Training Center is located at, at Blaine, Minnesota. The National Hockey Center at St. Cloud State University in Minnesota was renamed for Brooks in April of 2013. In 2006, Brooks was inducted after his death into the Hockey Hall of Fame in the Builders category. The inscription reads, a man of passion and dedication. Herb Brooks inspired a generation of Americans to pursue any and all dreams. Um, <laughs> he actually had a thing called Brooksisms. And if you haven't heard of him, go on and go on anywhere where you can find Brooksisms and read them. Um, it's funny. But one of the biggest speeches he ever gave to his team was before the Miracle on Ice game, while they were waiting for the game to start, he said, it's your time. They had their time. If you don't win this, you will take it to your graves. He used some colorful language, and I, I'm trying to, you know, not use it. Um, so, yeah, that is my tribute to Herb Brooks, um, a legend here in Minnesota. Uh, you got to realize at the time the Miracle on Ice happened, this country was not on good terms with itself. Um, we were suffering with the Carter era, which we had our major recession in. Um, and who knows, maybe we need another Miracle on Ice to get us out of the funk we're in now under the Biden administration, which I'm not getting into politics. I'm just laying the foundation of what happened during the uh, Miracle on Ice and what it made it so special. Some people say that this contributed to the end of the Cold War because we proved that the USSR wasn't as strong as what it was. Um, I don't know about that, but I mean, it's a pretty big deal. A uh, Minnesota coach coaching a U.S. Olympic team in 1980 to gold against the Russians was a big deal. You got to realize it was during the Cold War. And we hadn't fought the Russians on the war front, but we we're fighting them politically and on ice, even though it probably didn't mean that to the players or anything, it meant a lot to America to beat the Russians that day because it showed that when we won that game, which was a dream scenario, no one gave us a chance to win that game because and Herb Brooks, I think, is very smart for this. Schedule an exhibition game with the Russians at Madison Square Garden where they lost 10-3. to I think Brooks was very smart for that because I think what he thought in his head was that, you know what? We can beat these guys. We scored three goals on them. Granted, they blew us out. They beat our ass 10-3, to but we scored three goals. Now, if we can get even better, we can have a chance against this team. And Herb Brooks was motivated by what happened in 1960, where he was the last cut. And that 1960 team at Squaw Valley, where the 1980, 1980 tournaments would be held at, same place, Squaw Valley. He told that coach after the 1960 um, gold medal winning team, that you made the right choice. So he had that goal, which that goal would have never been um, uh, achieved had Khrushchev and some of the Soviets and all that told Carter to go screw himself because Carter wanted to boycott the Summer Olympics after the Russian, or after the Soviets invaded Afghanistan. And if we didn't go over there, they weren't going to come here. And so Herb Brooks was really mad about that. And when Khrushchev said, screw you to Carter, the games were on. Um, we were very lucky to get to that um, 
to get to that match against um, Russia because we had to tie and we had a lot of things that weren't going our way. But against the Russians, I would say that was one of the greatest upsets that any team had. I'd even say bigger than the when the Jets beat Baltimore in the Super Bowl three. I mean, it was a very political thing. I'm sure all the politicians here and all the politicians back in the USSR were way, licking their lips, saying, "If we win, this is a you know this is a big deal." Where the hockey players were just playing a game, and Herb Brooks was just coaching a game. Um, and the fever pitch of Americans in that stadium chanting, chanting USA and the roar of that crowd after we had one was probably one of the biggest things in the world. I remember watching the movie Miracle when it came out. Uh, Kurt Russell was amazing as Herb Brooks. Um, and I remember watching, uh, the, um, I wasn't born in the 80s or 70s. I was born in 1993. So when YouTube had the game on there to watch what had happened back then, nowadays, I loved it. I mean, I was, I had already known what was going to happen, but at the same time, I watched it. And when we won, it was huge. I mean, you got to realize how huge that was for this country back then. And, I think it's funny that, you know, they use all-stars and all that in the Olympics now. They're not using players that probably don't have that attitude of, well, you know, I'm a hockey, I'm a high, I'm not in college or I'm not, you know, I'm in the pros. I don't need this. They go there, they probably get paid to do it. And they're called dream teams, you know, so. That's all for today. Um, go check out the Deluxe Edition Network where you'll find the May Podcast of the Month, which are The Real Drunks and Horsing Around. Also, go check out the many other podcasts on the network. You won't be disappointed. Many different genres, many great different podcasts on there, um, which include Talking Shit, The Talking Shit Show with Brian and Mark Bensett Jr. You can also check out Flet's movie and pop culture review 13 and go check out the deluxe edition podcast go check out hilf history i'd like to blank with don brody go check out the deep dark secrets podcast and if you haven't yet which why haven't you go check out the new podcast that's on the network called the broken system podcast by robert I think it's Palm Palmer. Sorry, Robert, if I screwed up your name. Um, but yeah, go check him out. Go check out everyone at the Deluxe Edition Network.com. And if you're new to the channel, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification icon so you'll never miss another mess or episode of this podcast. Thank you for 100 episodes. Thank you for the amazing support. We're almost 1,000 downloads all time. And like I've said before, if we reach 1,000 downloads all time on the podcast or 1,000 downloads in the last 30 days on the podcast, I will do a live Q&A question and answer session where I'll probably try and get some guests on there. And you, the fans, can come on. Be respectful with the questions, though, please. And ask us questions. I will also be, this Saturday, I will also be on one of the networks. Um, and one of my great friends, Kyle Flett's podcast, which is Flett's Movies and Pop Culture 13. And that will be at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on YouTube. Um, I can't remember what we're really talking about, but join us on there. I will possibly have it live streamed for my channel as well i'll have to ask kyle because i'd like to ask for permission i know mark doesn't but i do and also uh go check out mark benset and brian as they are on the talking shit show great show they talk shit a lot um 
and just like I said, go check out everyone on the network. You know, they there's a podcast for everyone on the network. They're very great. And like I always say, I'm not here to brag about myself. I'll brag about the other podcasts. But thank you so very much. I'm Stephen Jarvis. This is the Stephen Jarvis and Friends podcast. And I will talk to you next Tuesday. Thank you so very much. This this episode will show up on Saturday. I just recorded it today on Thursday just so that, you know, it's all done. Thank you so very much. And I will talk to you all on Tuesday. Have a great day, everyone. This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to DeluxeEditionNetwork.com. That's DeluxeEditionNetwork.com.